What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Eurozone and welcome to the Pit. <laughs> oh, that was a that was a really bad intro. Uh, welcome to the last ever Fazbear Frights audiobook. Uh, well, actually, technically, it's not because I haven't finished the Fetch audiobooks, but they're gonna come after this one. But this is the last story in the Fazbear Frights books. There is no epilogue to this book. Uh, this is You're the Band, the last story in Felix the Shark. And honestly, this is a great end to the series. You're going to really enjoy this story. Um, I haven't read it properly, but I have read the summary of it and it looks fantastic. So I'm excited to get into this. Uh, guys, if you have been coming along and listening to my audiobooks all this time, uh, for all of the Fazbear Frights books, then I just want to say... A huge thank you. Honestly, all of your support has been amazing. Um, I've had a lot of people come and go uh, and a lot of people saying that they really enjoy the audiobooks and a lot of people saying that they, they don't really like the style of it because I talk too much in some of them. But um, honestly, I, I'm sticking with the style because uh, I, I quite like just, you know, reacting to them as well as, uh, as reading them because otherwise it's quite boring, you know. Um, so I hope you have been enjoying the audiobooks. Uh, I will be back for Tales from the Pizza Plex, which is set to release in July. I can't remember when, I think it's July or August. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say a huge thank you because it's been amazing making these audiobooks and um, yeah, I, I can't wait to do it for Tales from the Pizza Plex. Anyway, you're the band. This is going to be so good. You're in for a treat. This is actually a short one. This is the shortest one of the, uh, of the Felix the Shark book. Uh, but it's it's a pretty good one. So uh, hold on tight and let's get straight into it You can come back now dr. Monroe said standing in the doorway that led from the waiting room to the area where she saw patients Sylvia sat set down the magazine She had been pretending to read even though it was one of those trashy celebrity gossip rags Where the stories were written on a first grade level. She couldn't concentrate her mind was too busy thinking about uh, worrying about what Timmy was saying to Dr. Monroe. Rationally, she saw, she knew loads of kids went to see psychologists, and the fact that Timmy was too shouldn't make her feel bad about herself as a mother. But parental guy uh, guilt wasn't rational, and so she couldn't help playing the voice over and over in her head that said, it's your fault, it's your fault Timmy is in trouble, it's your fault Timmy isn't acting right. Timmy had always been such a happy, easy-going child, as a baby, he hardly cried and slept through the night immediately. As a preschooler, all she had to do was see a tub of blocks or paper uh, and crayons in front of them, and he could amuse himself for hours. Once he started school, his teachers talked about what a nice kid he was, how there were never any behavioural behavioral problems with Timmy. But then there had been the phone call from Miss Lotz, Timmy's current teacher, saying Timmy didn't seem himself and asking if there might be a problem at home she should be made aware of. There definitely wasn't a problem, but Sylvia didn't... Uh, sorry, there definitely was a problem, but Sylvia didn't know what it was. That was why she had brought Timmy to see Dr. Monroe. Sylvia followed the doctor down the hall and into a child-friendly room with one small table for playing blocks and another for drawing. Shelves around the room were filled with picture books and dolls and stuffed animals. Timmy was sitting at the drawing table, hunched over a piece of paper with great concentration. Please sit in one of the big chairs, Dr. Monroe said with his pleasant smile. Like a child psychologist should be, she seemed patient and good-humoured, easy to talk to. Sylvia sat down in a wing-backed uh, wing armchair across from Dr. Monroe's desk. She looked at Timmy, but he didn't look up from his drawing. I often encourage children to draw pictures during a session, Dr. Monroe said. Sometimes they show things they can't describe in words. And speaking of that, she leaned toward D Timmy to be closer to his eye level. Timmy, can I show your mum the drawing you gave me? Timmy nodded. Dr. Monroe grabbed a piece of sketch paper from her desk and held it to Sylvia. Sylvia looked at her son's artwork, which featured a cartoon bear in a top hat, a blue bunny and a yellow chick. These characters had been showing up in Timmy's drawings a lot lately. Timmy, can you tell your mum about that drawing? Timmy sighed like he was annoyed to be interrupted in his work, but he wanted, uh, sorry, he walked to, 
to the picture Sylvia was holding and pointed at the characters. That's Freddy, Bonnie and Chica, he said. They were in the band when I went there. When you went there? Dr. Monroe said gently. Tell your mum. Timmy looked up at his mummy with guideless uh, b brown eyes. When I went to Freddy's. See, this is the kind of thing he keeps saying, Sylvia said, trying not to let her fear come out in her voice. But it doesn't make sense. There is no Freddy's. Right, there hasn't been for a long time, Dr. Monroe said. Not since that tragic incident happened, what, 30 years ago? But I remember going there when I was about Timmy's age for drink, for, for drinking, for birthday parties and that kind of thing. She took the drawing from Sylvia and studied it. These are definitely the characters who were in the animatronic band, but I was never interested in them when I went there. I was at Freddy's for one purpose, and that purpose was pizza. Sylvia managed a polite smile. She knew the doctor was trying to put her at ease, but she was too worried about Timmy to joke around. So, do you think you can help him? She asked. May I talk to you in the hall for a second? Dr. Monroe asked. Tell me, we'll be right back, okay? Okay, Timmy said, still absorbed in his drawing. In the hallway, Dr. Monroe said, To answer your question, I do think I can help Timmy, but I would be lying if I said I wasn't confused about the behaviours he's exhibiting. It's very confusing, Sylvia agreed. It felt good to talk to someone who was trying to understand and help. A lot of the time, he seems like a different person. He'll talk about things he couldn't possibly have experienced, like they're in the present day. It's like he's two different people. The Timmy I've always known, and then some kid I don't. The worst thing is... Sylvia felt tears coming on, but did not want to cry in front of Dr. Monroe. Sometimes I feel like the Timmy I know is disappearing and being replaced by this other kid. I know that must be difficult for you, Dr. Monroe said. But the Timmy that you know and love is still there. We'll get this figured out, Miss Collins. When did Timmy start exhibiting this behaviour? It's weird how little boys get obsessed with things, Sylvia had said one week ago. She was stretched out on the couch, talking to her best friend Maria on the phone. Tell me about it, Maria said. With Miles, it's dinosaurs, and heaven help me if I mispronounce the mile-long name of a dinosaur in one of his books. Then I am officially the dumbest mummy ever in his opinion. Sylvia laughed. Timmy had a dinosaur phase too, but now he's all about Freddy Fazbear. The pizza place from back in the day, Maria said. How did he even find out about it? The internet, I guess, Sylvia sighed. And I'll tell you, finding Freddy's related merchandise nowadays is no picnic. I've been trying to find Freddy party supplies for his birthday, but I haven't had any luck. It's too bad, because Freddy's is it's literally all he talks about these days. He watches all these videos about the characters. And then there aren't... Uh, wait, who? Okay, never mind. Then there are all the creepy conspiracy theory videos about the murders that took place at Freddy's back when we were kids. I was pretty little when those happened, but I still remember it, Maria said. Except for school and church. Mama didn't let us out of the house for a month. I don't blame her, Sylvia said. You know, I kind of wish Timmy would lay off the conspiracy videos. It's some pretty dark stuff. But at the same time, I know if I tell him not to watch them, he'll only want to watch them more. Yeah, I'll just wait it out if I were you, Maria said. Soon, he'll be bored with Freddy and move on to whatever his next obsession will be. Probably so, Sylvia said. It's weird the phases they go through. And then he'll grow up to be a man and bore women to death, talking about football or whatever his big boy obsession is. Sylvia laughed. Once she hung up with Maria, Sylvia continued her internet search for Freddy party paraphernalia. <laughs> paraphernalia? What is that? She looked at the party depot site and found some, uh, <laughs> some generic paper plates and napkins decorated in a balloon and confetti design. She bought them on the theory that nobody would be selling used paper plates and napkins from over 30 years ago. And even if they were, who would buy them? In a sudden burst of inspiration, she logged on to an auction site. She typed in Freddy Fazbear. The first item she saw listed was a Freddy Fazbear Halloween mask, which had been posted by a seller named Retro Merch, with threes instead of E's, because they're cool. She, she clicked on the listing and a photo appeared. The mask was large, the kind that would fit over a person's entire head. It was brown and fuzzy with round barriers and Freddy's trademark top hat. She knew Timmy would love it. Shockingly, no one had bid on the mask yet, even though it had been on sale for five days. Sylvia was about to place a bid when she saw another person on the screen. 
buy it now for a hundred dollars. It was a splurge, but Timmy's birthday just came once a year and she knew the mask would make him really happy. She clicked on the link and made the purchase. That night, as she lay in bed, it dawned on Sylvia that she should have looked at Retro Merch's other items. Maybe they had other Freddy stuff. She briefly considered picking up her phone to look, but it was already late, and she knew if she spent too much time staring at a screen, she would never get to sleep. Ooh. This is so good. It's getting straight into it, right? We're only like a couple pages in, and it's already like, uh, like a lot more developed as a story than like Felix the Shark and, uh, and the Scoop. Timmy sat at the breakfast table while Sylvia sliced bananas over his bowl of cornflakes. He was wearing a Freddy Fazbear t-shirt Sylvia had found in a thrift shore, store. Uh, it was the only t-shirt he wanted to wear anymore. When Sylvia insisted on washing it, he would go shirtless until it was clean and dry. Mum, Timmy said, who was your favourite character from Freddy's? He crunched his, cor his cornflakes. Sylvia listened to Timmy prattle about these characters all the time, but she had a hard time keeping their names straight. Freddy was the only one she could remember clearly, but saying he was her favourite seemed like a cop-out. I like the bird, she tried. She was almost certain there was a bird. You mean Chica, Timmy said, sounding like a teacher correcting a student. Yeah, Sylvia said. I think she's cute, all yellow and fuzzy. I like Chica too, but Freddy's my favourite because he's the star. Timmy shoveled in some more cornflakes. Speaking of getting to be a star, I know somebody has a birthday coming up, Sylvia said. I wonder if you can guess who. Timmy grinned. <gasps> Is it me? S Sylvia smiled back at him. The kid had such a winning smile. I think it might be. My favourite seven-year-old is turning into my favourite eight-year-old. How did that happen? I grew. You did. You've grown so much this year, and I'm so proud of you. Hey, did you get the party invitations handed out to all your friends at school? Uh-huh. Timmy pushed his bowl away. I told them it was going to be a Freddy party, and we're going to have an awesome time. Awesome, Sylvia repeated, still re li feeling a little nervous about pulling off the party. This stuff may have creeped her out, but it made Timmy happy. She smiled down at him. You'd better hurry so you don't miss the bus. Once Timmy was on the bus, Sylvia poured herself a second cup of coffee. She hoped she could deliver on the awesome time Timmy had promised his friends. Sylvia never thought parenting was something she'd have to do by herself. James had been so excited to be a dad and when he found out the baby they were expecting was a boy, he had been over the moon. He'd gone out and bought a soccer ball and a baseball bat right away. Sylvia had laughed and said they were going to have a baby, not a professional athlete. Boy or not, he wasn't going to be ready to kick around a soccer ball for quite some time. Besides, what if the kids turn out not to be interested in sports? James said he would love his son no matter what he was like, and Sylvia knew it was true. But then, just one month before the baby was due, James was involved in a fatal accident at the construction site where he worked. He never got to meet his son he was so excited about having. Sylvia felt tears welling in her eyes, but tried to shake off her sudden fit of melancholy. Really, what she should be focusing on was Timmy's party. She remembered that last night she had thought about going back on the auction site to see if Retro Merch had any other Freddy-related items for sale. She wasn't comfortable with Timmy's Freddy obsession. She felt like if you scratched the surface there was a ghoulish component to it, but if she indulged him now, surely he would get tired of it sooner or later and move on to the next thing. She, looked, she logged onto the site and once again typed in Freddy Fazbear. No items came up. She decided to search by the seller's name. Nothing. There was no evidence of that seller ever existing. It was strange. She hoped she hadn't been scammed. If she had, she would definitely file a complaint with the auction site. At least she hadn't told Timmy he was getting a Freddy mask, so he wouldn't be disappointed when it didn't arrive. But then, just two days before Timmy's birthday party, the mask did arrive. Sylvia found a battered cardboard box on the doorstep. She cut it open, and there, looking a little more weathered than it had in the online picture, was the Freddy Fazbear mask. When she lifted it out of the box, it was surprisingly heavy. It also had a strange smell that Sylvia remembered from her grandmother's closet, when she used to dive behind the musty old coats playing hide-and-seek. Mothballs. She hadn't smelt those in years. She figured she could freshen up the mask with a damp washcloth and a little mild detergent to get rid of the mothball smell. The mask didn't look new, 
But it wasn't supposed to. It was vintage, a collectible. Timmy was going to love it. That evening, over dinner, Sylvia told Timmy, We need to go over your birthday party plans and make sure nothing, there's nothing we're forgetting. Okay, Timmy said, forking up some chicken and rice. So, I've got all the stuff to grill hamburgers and hot dogs outside, and we'll have lemonade to drink. Uh Uh-huh, Timmy said, and I'll pick up the cake at the bakery on Saturday morning. And you'll be a Freddy cake, right? Right. I showed them some pictures, and they said they could do it. Good. Would there be ice cream? Timmy asked. There will be ice cream, Sylvia said, smiling. Vanilla and chocolate, so people can choose either one. Or both, Timmy said, smiling back at her. Yes, both is always a good choice. Sylvia said, reaching over to ruffle his hair. Wow, Sylvia, you really went all out, Sylvia's friend Maria said, surveying the backyard's party decorations. There were balloons and steamers, sorry, (laughs) steamers, streamers. What's a streamer? (laughs) Like a YouTube, like a Twitch streamer? And a traditional donkey piñata. I think I know what a streamer is, don't worry. Uh... And there were also homemade Freddy-themed decorations, too. Even a poster Sylvia had drawn with a cartoon bear, bunny and chicken that read, Freddy and friends say, Happy birthday, Timmy. Sylvia had even decorated the back porch to look like a stage from the old Freddy Fazbear's complete with a red star curtain. Well, I made it as nice as I could, Sylvia said. You only turn eight once, right? Miles, Mariah's son, said, I turn eight in February. (laughs) Sylvia smiled at him. Yeah, and I bet your mum will put together a great party for you. I'll do my best, Maria said. But this will be a tough act to follow. She patted Miles back and said, Why don't you put your present on the table and go play with Timmy and Jamal? Uh, Miles sped off toward the gift table, leaving the two mums alone. So, you think I actually pulled this off? Sylvia asked, watching Miles join his friends. You more than pulled it off, Maria said. I'm impressed. I don't know, Sylvia said. Sometimes I feel like uh, being a single parent, I work twice as hard and only do half as good a job. I'm sure you do work twice as hard, Maria said, giving her a half hug. But you do a great job. Timmy is lucky to have you. Sylvia looked over at Timmy, playing with Miles and Jamal. Is that how you say that? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing Jamal. Jamal. Uh, Climbing on the backyard swing set, joking about silly stuff and laughing extra loud. Her heart smelled with love. We're lucky to have each other, she said. The kids ate hot dogs and hamburgers and cake and ice cream. They took turns, walloping the piñata until it spewed candy. Then they gathered around the picnic table to watch Timmy open his presents. Timmy, before you open the presents from your friends, Sylvia said, I have something special I'd like to give you. She handed him a large box wrapped with balloon and confetti printed paper. The kids at the table let out an <laughs> of excitement. I don't know what this is, Timmy said. Sylvia laughed. That's the idea. It's a surprise. Timmy tore into the wrapping paper, then opened the box. When he saw the mask, he gasped. Mum, where? Where did you get this? He lifted the mask from the box and held it up so the other kids could see. Oh, I just did a little online shopping, Sylvia said. Try it on. I love it, Timmy said, putting it on his head. Well, it's heavy. He looked at his friends. Since I'm Freddy... I'm going to get on the stage and sing. Who wants to be Bonnie? I can be Bonnie, Miles said. That's the rabbit, right? Uh Uh-huh, Timmy said. And we need somebody to be Chica. I'll be Chica, (laughs) Isabella said. She giggled. But I don't know who Chica is. The three kids stood on the porch stage with Timmy in the middle wearing his mask. Okay, now we're going to sing our song, Timmy said. He launched into a song that Sylvia figured must have been one of the songs the animatronic band used to perform at the old Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Timmy must have learned it from those videos he was always watching. Miles and Isabella clearly didn't know the lyrics, so Timmy asked them to just move their lips while he sang their parts. They seemed happy to oblige. Look at you, Sylvia said. You're the band. She snapped a couple of pictures on her phone. After Timmy finished singing, he pulled off the mask. Phew! So cool, but also really heavy, he said, laughing. The kids returned to the table, and Timmy opened the presents everyone else had brought. Sylvia was relieved that she didn't even notice, uh, sorry, that she didn't even once have to remind him to say thank you. 
As the last kids were leaving, Sylvia felt the satisfaction of a job well done. She shouldn't have worried so much. It had been a great party. <laughs> I loved that scene. I love... Oh, that's brilliant. This is... So far, this is actually probably my favourite story. I'm not even joking. This is turning out so well. Why was this scrapped? I think I know why it was scrapped, but we'll have to... I'll have to talk about that later. Anyway, that night, Sylvia was officially ready for some me time. Every night after Timmy was tucked into bed, she gave herself at least an hour to relax and do something she enjoyed. Sometimes it was reading a book, sometimes it was watching a movie that, unlike all the movies she saw with Timmy, was not animated. Sometimes it was just taking a long, leisurely bath. Tonight she had put on her pyjamas and curled up in bed with a mystery novel and a slice of leftover birthday cake. It was, she decided, the perfect combination. After just a few bites and a few pages, Sylvia's relaxation was interrupted by the sound of a scream. It took her a moment to process what she had just heard. Then, there was another scream. Timmy's room. The screams were coming from Timmy's room. In next to no time, Sylvia was out of her bed, on her feet, and running across the hall. Timmy was sitting up in bed. He was breathing hard, and his eyes were wide with terror. Did you see it? He asked, his voice breathless. See what? Sylvia said, going to his bed to comfort him. I don't know what it was. It was dark, and it was moving too fast. But it was right there. He pointed at the edge of the bed. Sylvia scooted him to bed next to him. You sure you weren't dreaming? Sometimes dreams can feel awfully real. But it was right here! Timmy seemed on the verge of tears. Well, that's when dreams seem extra real, sweetie, Sylvia said. When you wake up and you're in the same room where the dream took place. But there's nothing here that I can see. Do you want me to look under your bed and in your closet? Timmy nodded. Sylvia got up from the bed, then bent down to look underneath it. Nothing here but dust bunnies. <laughs> dust bunnies! <laughs> Dust bunnies. There's sea bunnies and dust bunnies. You're not scared of dust bunnies, are you? No, Timmy said. He sounded a little less scared. She could hear a smile in his voice. All right, now the closet. She opened the door. The closet was cluttered with board games and shoes and jackets. Nothing here but your mess, she said. Okay, Timmy said. So the coast is clear, Sylvia said. Why don't I turn the hall light on so it won't be quite so dark in here? and you can go back to sleep. Okay, Timmy said again, laying his head back down on the pillow. As Sylvia pulled the door of Timmy's room half shut the way he liked it, she could feel like she caught the glimpse of something creepy, but at second glance, it was only the Freddy Fazbear mask sitting on the dresser, its unseeing eyes seeming to watch her leave the room. The next morning, Timmy was sleeping late, probably because he was tired from the party and the nightmare that had interrupted his rest. She decided to let him sleep in, which gave her a rare chance to relax with a second cup of coffee in the newspaper. She was pouring her coffee when she heard a rustling sound in the backyard, too loud to be made by a bird or squirrel. She looked out the window and saw nothing out of the ordinary, but the sound continued. She went into the living room and looked out the window, nothing there either. Then she went to the bedroom. She didn't see anything, but the rustling sound grew louder. She remembered Timmy insisting that something had been moving around in his room last night. Maybe she had been wrong to dismiss him so quickly. Maybe there was an intruder who was skulking around in the yard right now. She should probably call the police. Where was her phone? On the kitchen counter, she remembered as she tried to calm herself down. She had set it there when she had come in to make some coffee. She went to the kitchen and picked up her phone, then looked out the window again. The face of a man appeared, making her jump and knock over the cup of coffee she had left sitting on the counter. The man, who was probably in his early twenties, held up his hands and mouthed the words, Sorry. Sylvia put up her index finger in the universal sign for just a minute and went to meet him outside. He didn't look like a serial killer, she decided, and surely most serial killers didn't do their work on Sunday mornings in broad daylight. True. Is there something I can help you with? Sylvia said. The young man was dressed in shorts and a t-shirt and looked like a college kid. I was just looking for my dog, he said. He got off his leash. Sylvia noticed that the young man wasn't holding a leash. I haven't seen a dog, she said. Hey, the young man said, nodding in the direction of the backyard. It looks like you've been having a party. Yes, Sylvia said. 
My son's birthday was yesterday. I needed to take down the decorations. She told herself to stop talking. Why was she explaining herself to this stranger? The decorations are interesting, the young man said. Sylvia nodded. Yeah, just some stuff like my son likes. That bear on the poster. That's Freddy Fazbear, right? There was something strange about the way he asked this question. His curiosity seemed more intense than it should be. Sylvia nodded again, feeling that this conversation was growing increasingly awkward. I thought so, the young man said. There aren't too many kids these days who would even know who Freddy Fazbear is. Oh, I don't know. Kids learn all kinds of things on the internet. Sylvia felt like this conversation had gone on far too long. He had told her he was looking for his dog, and she had told him he hadn't, she hadn't seen it. The conversation should have stopped right there. Why had it felt the why had he felt the need to interrogate her about her kid's birthday party? Listen. Oh, no, <laughs> never mind. Listen, I've got to go, she said. I hope you find your dog. When Sylvia went back inside, Timmy was standing in the kitchen, still dressed in his pyjamas. Mom, can I have some cornflakes? He asked. 